It really does give me great personal pleasure to welcome you on behalf of the Board of Trustees to this 40th uh, birthday, if you will, celebration of Africa Rice, which is being organized here in the Gambia. The Gambia, we know, was one of the founding members and remains one of the major supporters of local rice production in, in the continent. It's a matter of, of great pride for all of us to see that the seed that was sown in, in 1971 by the truly visionary founding uh, fathers of, of Africa Rice, Burkina Faso, Cote d'Ivoire, the Gambia, Ghana, Liberia, Mali, Mauritania, Niger, Senegal, Sierra Leone, and Togo, that this seed today has grown into a truly giant tree whose branches are fast spreading across Africa and whose fruits are benefiting millions of poor farmers and, and consumers. We're happy to see that uh, many of the representatives of the founding members of Africa Rice are in fact here today, as well as representatives of the member countries which joined the center uh, later. These include Benin, Cameroon, Chad, Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, and Nigeria, which became members between 1971 and 2006. And then the Central African Republic, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Gabon, Egypt, Madagascar, Republic of Congo, and Uganda, which became members between 2007 and, and the present. Now it's difficult, in fact impossible, to summarize 40 years of work briefly. But we can just say that it is not by chance that the center has won the World Food Prize, the King Badun Award for the outstanding research in the CGIR, two UN awards, two Japanese awards, three additional CGIR awards, presidential awards from Cote d'Ivoire, Senegal, and Burkina, as well as regional and international marks of recognition. African rice farmers today can choose from over 200 improved varieties released through the work of the center over the last 25 years. The upland and lowland Nuricas are now planted on more than 700,000 hectares across the continent, showing very positive uh, major impacts on rice productivity and, and farmer incomes. High yielding Sahel varieties now occupy more than 80% of the Senegal River Valley. Now in addition to breeding, Africa Rice has also shown that Integrated Crop Management, or ICM, is a promising approach for Sub-Saharan Africa. In Mali, for example, ICM technologies have increased its average rice yield in irrigated areas from two to six tons per hectare, major impact. Thanks to Africa Rice work, research and extension agents can also access a wide array of participatory methods, innovation systems, and learning tools that facilitate technology adoption. Thousands of research of resource poor farmers and processors across Africa have benefited from farmer learning videos. Most post, many postgraduates have been trained, several of whom are now productive researchers and research leaders at national, regional, and international levels. Now, all of these achievements of the center were possible thanks to the dedicated efforts of many individuals over the four decades and through partnerships, particularly with the National Agricultural Research Systems, but also with sister centers and advanced research institutes. In 2009, the continent imported one-third of what is available on the world market, costing an estimated five billion US dollars. Soaring and highly volatile rice prices and relatively low levels of global stocks are expected to prevail over the next years. As witnessed by the food crisis in 2008, this is a very risky, expensive, and unsustainable situation 
and could lead to severe food insecurity and civil instability in uh, uh, some African countries. However, Africa has the human, the physical, and the economic resources to produce enough rice to feed itself. And Africa rice will continue to serve as an excellent platform for scientific cooperation at the service of the Africa rice sector in keeping with the vision of its founding me uh, members. Now, an anniversary of this sort, I believe, is an opportunity to reflect on where we are coming from, what has been achieved, and just as importantly, where we are, where we're going. So let me conclude by very briefly sharing some personal reflections. 20 years ago, almost exactly, at the half uh, of the life of Africa Rice, I had the privilege of joining uh, Africa Rice, then known as WARDA, to serve as the uh, WARDA Director of Research. I was hired at that time by Eugene Terry as part of his uh, change management team. Through the leadership of, of Dr. Terry, I think one can say that a new WARDA was born. Those who are present who knew our work during that period would have to say that, in fact, it was a rebirth of the organization founded 20 years earlier. Within three years, the first Nureka crosses had been made. Work that was to win, within half a dozen years, the King Baudouin Award, and then that earned Monty Jones, um, a, a brilliant Sierra Leonean rice breeder, the World Food Prize. So what I'm saying is that the history of Africa rice has not been linear. It has not been a, one of continual progress. Indeed, it has been to some extent cyclical, and it has repeated itself. What I personally see today under the leadership of the current Director General, Dr. Papa Abdelaziz, is another rebirth. And this rebirth is characterized, I think, by at least four principles that I'll just mention briefly. And these four principles emerged from the lessons of the past. The first, we are undergoing a major shift in mindset from supply-driven research, where the scientists, the breeders, the agronomists are focused only on increasing production, towards more demand-driven research, sometimes called market-oriented research, where we are trying to tailor products to the, uh, not only consumer preferences, but to the reality of the entire value chain. And we're working on both the value chain on the output market side, as well as on the input market side. This is a revolution in thinking, and uh, the time has come for it. It has emerged out of the lessons of the past. The second principle that is driving uh, the new Africa rise is a renewed commitment to partnership, a partnership which is based on mutual respect, which is based on allocation of tasks across um, institutions based on institutional comparative advantage, that features capacity building and mutual capacity building in each partnership. Africa Rice benefits enormously by being a, an intergovernmental association. And for that reason, partnership with the National Agricultural Research Systems and Institutes is absolutely central. The third principle that I think characterizes uh, the new uh, Africa rise is excellence. An uncompromising commitment to recruiting absolutely the best staff, excellence in the design of research, excellence in the implementation of research, and a focus on having real impact. Excellence does characterize, I think, Africa Rice of today as respected in the prizes that it has recently won. A final principle that I see expressed today that is deeply rooted in the past, and that is one of pragmatic optimism. 
During the darkest days when I joined Warda 20 years ago, and I can say Warda uh, because it was Warda 20 years ago, we did we we <coughs> lacked financing. We committed to building a uh, new research center at Bay by taking a 12 million dollar loan, and we were not certain we could pay it. Uh, we uh, hired scientists that left some of the best research systems in the world to join us, and they were housed in eight foot by 10 foot uh, plywood uh, labs for the first year and a half. They had a vision, and that vision came from the Director General of not what is, but what we can become. And I think the current Africa Rice is, is uh, characterized by that same enormous pragmatic optimism of the current Director General and his, and his staff. So in closing, I think this anniversary is a good time for us to consider how we can build on our past achievements and maintain the vigor of a still young and dynamic research center. In short, I, I'd rather not say that Africa Rice is 40 years old, but that it is, in fact, experiencing a rebirth. And borrowing on the words of my, my young successor, uh, Marco Wolperice, we are, in fact, 40 years young. Uh, I'd like to thank all of you for uh, attending this anniversary celebration and uh, look forward to the conversations later today. Thank you all very much.